Hello and welcome to the 10th episode of the Data Science Daily Series. As you all know, we are going to cover Python right now. So we discussed in the past two sessions about what Python is, what is programming, and we also saw the steps to installing Python using the popular Anaconda distribution. Now I hope that Anaconda distribution has been installed in your laptops and you're able to access the Jupyter Notebook interface like we saw in the last session itself. If that's not yet set up, please go back to episode nine, make sure you're setting up Jupyter Notebook and then come back to this session and watch it. So the agenda for today's session is to go over the different data types in Python. And what we will do is we will understand theoretically what are these data types and also see in Python, how does Python recognize the different types of data? Without further ado, let's get started. So let me share my screen. All right. First, let's have a recap of how do you launch the Jupyter Notebook? So if you have Anaconda already installed in your system, all you need to do is go to Anaconda Navigator. If you're using Windows, go to the Start button and search for Anaconda Navigator and launch it. If you're on MacBook, again, you don't need to search for Anaconda Navigator and click on it. And this window will open for you. Now, within this window, what you see are different applications. But the application that we are concerned with is the Jupyter Notebook interface. So all you need to do is click Launch and the Jupyter interface will open up in a new browser window, right? Whatever is your default browser, it will open up there. And once it opens up, it will look something like this. So this is my Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter interface. And this will be at your root directory, remember. So you can see folders like desktop, documents, downloads. You know, it will be a different set of folders if you are using Windows versus MacBook and if you have different uh, files as well. So make sure you're navigating to the place where you want to store all your code files or all the files where you're learning how to code. So what I will do is I will go to the desktop. I already have a Python notebook that I'm going to use for the tutorial. So what you can do is just create a new Python 3 kernel, right? A kernel is, so don't worry about what a kernel is, just uh, under notebook section, click on Python 3. And you will see one more tab open up and this will be having the title untitled hyphen Jupyter Notebook. So now that now you know that this is a Jupyter Notebook interface and you can just run the code and it will work for you. Now, notice that what I see here is trusted on the top right and I can see the kernel name as well. So uh, this kernel has actually launched. Right. So what do we mean by the kernel has launched? That means a Python environment is ready to use. If I, if I click on kernel, right, and I say shut down, you will see that there is a red button here, which is saying no kernel. That means if I write any code, it will not work because Python environment is not active. For it to be active, you need to always start. The, the kernel needs to be started, right? It will always be started by default, but in case you are seeing that there is a message of no kernel by default, which is occurring, make sure you know you are restarting the kernel, you're restarting the notebook, and you're getting this kind of an interface where you're seeing trusted on the top right and Python 3 also mentioned. Now, this is the Jupyter Notebook interface. The first thing I will do before we dive into what are data types, I will rename this notebook to introduction to data types. Right? Once you rename it, the notebook will be renamed and the file name will also be renamed, like I can see in my desktop, right? It has become introduction to data types.ipynb. Now, ipynb is just a extension which is saying IPython notebook, right? I means interactive, py means Python, NB stands for notebook. So this is a this is the extension for Jupyter notebooks. Okay, now without further ado, let's come back and understand what do we mean by data types and why are 
data types so important to understand right each programming language has its own set of data types but there are a few commonalities across programming languages so we will understand specifically firstly what are data types why are they important and secondly what are the different data types in python so let's come to what exactly are data types in programming data types are fundamental classifications that tell the compiler or interpreter right don't worry about compiler or interpreter right we we are not discussing uh, the theory of computer science here but basically which tell the system right how a programmer intends to use the data so they are kind of the types of data and what do they do they define the following aspects so if i'm defining the aspect of data how can i do that the first aspect is the value that the data type that the data can take so what data types do data types specify the set of values that a variable can hold for example an integer variable can only hold whole numbers it can only hold integers right and on taking an another example a string variable we'll we'll talk about these variables but a string variable can only hold text so data types are basically integers and strings in this example and integers can only hold whole numbers right and string variables can only hold text so data types define the following aspects and the first aspect is the value that the variable can take if a variable is of a particular data type it can only take a certain set of values right that means only certain operations will be valid for that variable which has a particular data type i can add two integers together but i cannot add one integer and one string just because the data types are not compatible with each other so the value is the first thing that a data type specifies the second thing that we just talked about is operations data types determine what operations can be performed in the data for instance you can perform arithmetic operations on numbers but not on text and lastly data types also define the memory storage different data types have different ways of being stored in the memory right and for python to understand that this variable right is of a particular data type it accordingly manages its storage dynamically behind the hood right it, it basically does efficient memory storage and proper data handling so data types are very important because they define how much memory is going to take and how to do efficient memory storage so in a nutshell this is what data types are they are fundamental classifications that tell the system how the programmer intends to use data and they define three aspects mainly values that the data type can take right that the variable can take of a which is of a particular data type the operations that we can do on that variable which is again of a particular data type and the memory that is stored from that variable which is again of a specific data type so data types are basically properties of a variable and they define these aspects okay now what are the different data types in python right let's go through these one by one and these are the fundamental building blocks to building and writing any code so make sure you are very familiar very comfortable with all of these we will have a short quiz of five questions towards the end of this session which will be live so you will get a chance to test your understanding as well i will go one by one first talk about these and then go to python and show you how can you check the type of the data type of a variable right or just the data type in general so first data type is int which which is short for integer right it's mentioned int because this is how python recognizes the data type integer we will shortly see how it represents integers that is just whole numbers right can be minus can be plus can be zero but it has to be whole number that is minus 1 0 1 2 all of these are whole numbers things like 1.2 1.3 2.1 1, all of these are decimal based numbers right so decimal based numbers are not included in integers only whole numbers are included like 10 minus 25 and 0 right now let me go back to my uh, jupyter notebook and let me type a simple command type right 
Now, I will open a bracket and write the number 25. And what I'm trying to see here is what is the type of this value, right? Remember, data types define the value. So type of 25 should return an int. So once you type this in, in the cell, go to run, right, and click it. Now that you see the output is int, which is what we discussed, 25 is an integer, right? Similarly, let me do type of 0 and also go to run, and it will show me that it is again an integer. Now, what if I do type of, let's say, 5 divided by or 20 divided by 4? What do you think would happen? Would it give me an integer or would it give me a different kind of a data type? So 20 divided by 4 should be 5, right? That's a whole number. So it should return int to me. But what's happening beneath the hood is it's not giving back an integer. It is giving a very precise value, which is 5.0. Now, so although 5 is a whole number, 5.0 is not treated as a whole number within Python because there is a decimal associated with it. So this is a very subtle difference between the data types integer and float, right? And you need to make sure wherever you have decimal points, no matter if it's a whole number or not, Python always treats it as not an integer, right? So it needs to be five only. 5.0 is not an integer, right? So, so keep that in mind. All right, let's come to the next data type, which is float. And float represents floating point numbers. Floating point meaning that there are numbers with decimals. Right now, now we are looking at the real number line. You can take any value between minus infinity and plus infinity, right? If that value will always be right, a float until and unless it's an integer, right? If it's one, two, three, without any decimals, it's an integer, else it is a float. And we are covering the entire number line using just these two data types. 3.14 minus 2.5, 1.0 are all flows like we just saw, right? So if I do type of 3.14, this will be a float. If I do type of 21 divided by 4, this will be a float. If I do type of, let's see what happens if I do type of 0, 0.0. It's also a float, right? So keep this very, very clear wherever there are decimals, they are all floats right? or floating point numbers. All right, let's come to the next one. The next data type is interesting. It's called a string. Now, string represents text-based strings. Wherever you have text, right, like hello world is a text, Python is a text, right? And take these two examples for now. These are both text-based data, right? And so what we need to do is we need to encapsulate them or enclose them between either double quotation marks, like you can see hello world is enclosed within these double quotation marks, or you can see the word Python is enclosed within single quotation marks. Python actually accepts both of them, right? It just needs to be consistent. You cannot start a string with a single quotation and end it with a double quotation or vice versa, but you can use single quotation some in some places, double quotation in other places. However, doing that is not recommended, right? I'm just saying it's possible to do that in your code that you're using single quotation somewhere, double quotation other places, right? But there is a set of standards called PEP8 where it is important to be very, very consistent in your code. And we will talk about the best practices for writing Python code in a later video, right? Just keep in mind right now that strings represent text strings. So let's again check for these. So let me type type, right, to check the type of it. And notice that the color, um, yeah, so that's OK. So let's say type, and I will make it, let's say, int. It's a string. Now, int itself. You can see that if you're, if you're typing int and pressing enter, 
right? What I'm doing is I'm taking a shortcut for those of you who are wondering how I'm running the cell. Instead of clicking run each time, if you're using a MacBook, you can shift simply press shift enter and it will run it for you. If you're using a, key, a Windows system, you can do control enter and it will run that cell for you, right? And if you go to cell, here you will also see the shortcut how you want to, how you can run it on your system, right? Anyways, coming back. Now it has given me int, right? And let me do type of int. Now see something very, very interesting here. We are digressing a little bit, but let's see what is happening here, right? This is very interesting. So we were looking at strings. Anything which is within a double quotation mark is a string, right? So what example I've given is type of int, but int is enclosed within double quotation. So anything within a double quotation, be it a number, right? Be it a number like 1.2, this is not a float. This is also a string. And this is why Python is so good, right? It has defined set of rules that it always follows. Type of one is also a string. Now, what I did here is I removed the quotation marks and I just said type of int, right? Now, int itself is a type. So I'm trying to get the type of a type, which is a type, right? Um, make sure you're not confused. INT is not a string here because there are no quotation marks around it. It is a type variable, right? Like STR is a type. If I do type of STR, it will again be a type. So this is just something to keep in mind. If you're getting confused, you can ignore this for now, but it's very interesting how this is working. All right. Um, okay, let me also show you if you do it for any other string like this type of STRE, what will happen? it will have an error, right? Because STRE is not defined. It is not an inbuilt variable in Python, right? Although STR is, right? So this is something to keep in mind. If I do, right? Okay, so let's, let's move away from this and come back to the data types that we were discussing. Let's go to the next one, which is bool. And bool represents Boolean values, which are values like true or false, right? And uh, basically it can take two values, right? So if I do type of true, it is a bool. If I do type of false, it is a bool. However, notice if I do, if I do it all capitals, it is not colored in the same way. Python is not coloring this ca all caps true in the same way as this one. That is saying that this is not a Boolean, right? This will give you an error. It's treating that as something else. So the case of the letters matters, right? Whenever you are using any kind of a variable, any kind of a name, the upper cap, lower cap does matter, right? So this is not defined. If I make it within double quotations, it will be a string. If I change this to, let's say, single quotations, right? It will still be a string. And um, if I make it like this, what do you think will happen? I've given it both single quotations and double quotation. That doesn't matter. It's still a string, right? And I can also give it single quotations on the outside, double quotations on the inside, and it's still a string, right? Although this is not recommended, you use both of them, but there are specific use cases where you can use both quotation marks, right? Okay, so that is for a bool. Now let's come to a list. A list is an ordered sequence of elements, which is mutable. Now here is where we are coming into the data structures, right? And we are talking about um, different kinds of data structures. So what we will do is we will continue tomorrow, right? With the set of data structures, and go into each one of these in a lot of depth. In the meanwhile, like I promised in the beginning, there is a short quiz, right? Uh, and let's go over the quiz to understand, to, to test your understanding of the four data types, int, float, string, and bool. All right, let me launch the quiz in just a minute.
and it should be up on your screen now. So I'll give a few seconds for anyone to join and we'll get started then. Okay, so let's start the quiz. Which data type in Python can represent both whole numbers like 10 and 54, as well as decimal numbers like 3.14 and minus 2.5? Now, what is this data type? And there is one answer which is saying that this data type is float, right? Now, remember, integer can only take whole numbers, so that is not right. List, we have not yet discussed, but we know it is a data structure. Right, it can store data. It's not a data type exactly. Right, we uh, although we say it's a data type, but it's actually storing kind of data. Right, so we can skip that for now. String, it stores text. So by elimination, we know it's float. Even by logical thinking, it's float because float can take you know 10.0, 54.0, 3.14, and minus 2.5. It can represent whole numbers as well. All right. So float is the correct answer. Let's go to the next one. What data type is used to store a sequence of characters such as hello world or Python programming? Right? So is it a list, float, tuple, or string? Now you can already eliminate list and tuple because just because you have not discussed it, uh, the options are float or string. And this is again very, very obvious. It's a string, right? Because string represents a sequence of text characters. Right, so it's a string. So I hope you are clear with the four main um, data types in Python. And what we will do tomorrow is we will go over some of these remaining uh, types, which are list, tuple, set, and dictionary, and the none type, and discuss a bit more on these. Right, so the basic four data types, int, float, string, and bool, are relatively easier to understand. They have simpler properties. However, when you come to list, tuple, set, and dictionary, all of these are used to store data, but their properties are different. So we'll dive more into these tomorrow. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to put them in the chat, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Stay tuned. See you tomorrow.